Robots, Construct, Living Steel, Cylon, Golems, Synth, Pleasure Models, Terminators, Iron Giant. These aren't the droids you're looking for. Johnny Five, Vacuum Cleaners? Let's talk about Warforged. It's a story as old as time. God creates man, man creates robots, robots kill man. Wait, that's Jurassic Park. Gods create wizards? It's probably a little closer to what we're talking about. Regardless of how this goes, wizards always seem to create something and then die, and then that thing becomes a new thing. Things become a new thing. Very poignant. Moving on! The Warforged are a pretty great race for Dungeons and Dragons. They work off of the Construct base from 3rd edition and beyond, and they look, sound, and taste like robots, but they are in fact sentient magical constructs. Just like golems, wormwoods, shield guardians, gorams, Gorans, 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 that's a different video, and homunculi. So, so they aren't as rare of an oddity in the world, but the Warforged themselves are pretty unique. They are created by boring wizards who just decide, hey Dave, what do you want to do today? I don't know, let's make some dope robots. Hells yeah! Oh no, they've become too powerful. Ah, we're all dead. It's in the book. You can look it up. <clears throat> the Warforged get a lot of their customizations from how they choose to augment their bodies. For the most part, this comes from racial traits, just like any other race. But in this situation, it can make a big difference on how they physically look or how they interact with the world. And that can be through RP or combat. While other races can augment things like claws and talons or, you know, a goblin making his head bigger. It's called hard head, big teeth. It's pretty good. It goes pretty well with eat anything. So, you know. Look that up. That's a different video. Moving on! The Warforged can actually change the type of material their bodies are made out of to improve their offense as well as their defense. Once per long rest, you can just basically sit down and choose whether or not you want to have the light, medium, or heavy armor just by kind of rearranging your body. I've played a few games where people have done things like augment themselves with adamantine for damage reduction, or created hidden compartments within their bodies to hide small items or contraband or fused holy symbols. It really comes down to being a fun and interesting way to play and augment with the thing that is your exoskeleton or your skin. I guess that's kind of gross. It's kind of like a tattoo, but you can change it. Uh, from the basic standpoint of these characters, they're pretty strong. It's a strong race. They're immune to sleep, disease, breathing, eating, drinking, exhaustion. Maybe those last ones don't count as immunities, but if you don't need to breathe, I mean, I guess you're not really immune to oxygen. Are you immune to non-oxygen? Not breathing? I'm going to go with asphyxiation. Asphyxiation immunity. Immunity to asphyxiation. Moving on. Back to talking about armor. You don't have to wear armor. And what I mean to that is that you don't get to wear armor. But your body can be configured into these different types of armor classes ranging from light to heavy. And as traits go, you get to choose from Envoy, Juggernaut, and Skirmisher. I honestly don't see why you can't do all of them or switch between them like you do with the armor, but mm, whatever. I think there's some wiggle room there. Envoy! You get to choose a stat of your choice, choose a proficiency of your choice, and you get to choose skills in the tool of your own choice. And you know which one I'd choose. Probably couldn't see that, but I was winking. It was the shovel. That's another video. Did I mention your iron fists? That was a weird segue. Now we're gonna keep it. Juggernaut. Not iron fist, juggernaut. Different Marvel character. Iron fists. And now you're super tough, because you know, you're a robot. Robot. Robato. Roger Rabbit robot. You get plus two strength, and you get a D4 plus your strength modifier for your awesome fists whenever you decide to punch somebody in the face. And I think that's hella lame. I mean, strap a sword to that robot arm of yours, because you know, I don't know, claws, saw blades, something, clamps. You got robot hands. This should do way more than a D4 damage. I really think this should be higher if your whole build is based around it, being a metal man or a woman or bot bit bold boy. I mean, it's basically the same as a monk. So if you pick monk, I would absolutely give you a little boosty poo uh, for your robot pow, pow pow monk fists and just you know, boost that up to a D6 or, you know, equivalency. Uh, and for the skirmisher, because we've moved on to the skirmisher now, it's a dexterity boost. whoop de doo Uh, you know, more monk shit. I don't know. Just be a monk. Just be a monk, be a robot monk, and you're good to go. Just take it, take the shovel, take the shovel proficiency. Trust me, no situation will ever end with you being like, oh no, I have an extra shovel. It's always useful. My name's Jim Jam Roboto, and I specialize in digging where it can't be dug. That's a nice door. Boom, gone. Ooh, dragon killed your family. Diggity dug dead. Oh no, zombies. It's worm digging time. When all said and done, 3.5 and Pathfinder really went to town with uh, construct optimizations. They did also deal with the issue of healings and robots, and I think that makes robots more interesting if you take that route. The Warforged count as a living construct, so they can still be healed by magic and healing potions and what have you, but uh, that's hella boring. A boring? That is not a word. Seriously, if you wanna play in an interesting way, do it as a straight construct, not a living construct. 
no console, no death saves. If you reach a zero, you are broken. End of story. Now, that being said, you are totally capable of fixing yourself. And with things like the spell Mending and Make Whole, you can get a lot of mileage out of those. And they're fairly cheap if you want to have like a wand of it or, you know, have somebody craft it into a magical item. I do suggest players do this in a way that is kind of a hardcore mode. But I have also been pretty lax about it if a player does die. I've let players uh, still be able to be mended after death. They just people have to collect the pieces. It takes time, it takes money. And there's a lot of fun and interesting ways you can go about that if you decide to go that route. Uh, check out the construct creation for non-players, things like bone golems, guardians, edelons, and there's a lot of really cool things that you can use for inspiration for crossover. Want a third arm? You can make that work. Large metal shark teeth? I don't see why not. There are a lot of interesting variants you can use from the Simic Hybrid class from the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. I really think there's a lot to be said about augmenting and letting players branch out from different races and monsters to what they want to base their bodies off of. This could always get out of hand, and that's why it's important that you talk to your GM or your DM before building one of these armored behemoths. Uh, they are really cool, and if your DM's cool with it, go for it. Uh, you having a cannon for an arm? I say, why not? If you want to pretend to be Tony Stark and then convince your party that you're just trapped in the armor... Maybe you want to be like Alphonsus from Full Metal Alchemist and your soul's trapped inside this metal body. Maybe you just, you're into cold body parts and greased up pistons. I'm not here to judge you. I just do the artwork, not the greased up thing. Kind of painted myself into a corner here. Greased pistons. I should have made an oil can joke somewhere in there. Oil can. If you've made it this far, don't forget to drop your comments about your Warforged characters down below. Share this with all your friends, maybe some of your enemies. I love making these videos and I'm working to hopefully be able to do them full time and put out more than, you know, one video a month. Keep your comments and suggestions coming and head over to the Reddit slash character drawings for more awesome art by some really great artists, uh, as well as, you know, sharing your own characters over there. You know, maybe you'll get them drawn. I might start branching out over there and putting some of those into my videos. Uh, let me know what you guys think about that. And until next time, remember to keep your dice on the table. Side note, sentries rest. When you take a long rest, you must spend at least six hours in active, motionless state rather than sleeping. In this state, you appear inert, but it doesn't render you unconscious, and you can see and hear as normal. You basically just get to sit there and watch your party sleep. It's just creepy. Don't do that. Just buy some sunglasses or something, or stare at a tree. Ugh.